welcome to Europe ECR 2024. Uh, my name is uh, Davide Capodanno. I'm so glad to be here with uh, Antonio Colombo and uh, Stefan Varai to discuss uh, drug eluting stents because uh, sometimes we give for granted that, that uh, these are uh, good devices, uh, but there are still some events uh, at uh, one year at least, but also uh, beyond. So there are no better uh, speakers today to tell us uh, about the past, present and maybe future of this technology. And Antonio, uh, if you agree, I would start with you and ask you what are, in your perspective, a very important perspective, uh, the current limitations of drug eluting stents? Well, drug eluting stents are still a stent, which is a permanent device which stays as it is as at the time of implantation. The vessel is not really a permanent tube, has the capacity of remodel, like a Glagov, and has the capacity to pulsate, systole and diastole. And these two features are totally negated by a permanent metallic implant, even if it's drug eluting. And this fact may have an impact, uh, not necessarily at one year event, but uh, when we extend the follow-up to three, four, five years. Okay, so the caging of the vessel, it's an issue. It's a limitation. And maybe I can ask uh, Stefan, so we are taught that uh, stents are made of a platform, a polymer, a drug. So which uh, uh, of these aspects, uh, if anything, we can uh, improve? Well, uh, Davide, I'm glad you mentioned already the word uh, caging, because that's what we currently do, as Antonio mentioned, with the caging elements. And what we have now today with this uh, device is that there is some uncaging elements. So it is a metallic platform. It's made out of cobalt chromium, three helical strands, and it has distinct uh, uncaging elements that are with a um, bioresorbable substance and they bioresorb over six months. So in other words, the uncaging elements uh, allow the stent to modify to the vessel itself. And therefore, this is still with a metallic, you, you uh, have a scaffold, you have a bioresorbable uncaging element, and you have the drug. Okay. So that's really a novelty in uh, stent design. So if it is novel, is it correct to uh, say that this is a stent or we should call it in another way? So what is the correct term? So the, it's, it's, they, they call it a bioadapter because yeah. it adapts to the movements, the uh, physiological behavior of the vessel, so to say. It allows vasomotion capabilities. Okay, and this may, be, may address the issue that uh, Antonio has uh, uh, commented. Uh, but uh, uh, at uh, Europe ECR this year, we have the two-year data of the bioadapter randomized clinical trial. So last year, we have seen the one-year results uh, and the stent, uh, the bioadapter, was shown to be non-inferior to a comparator uh, in the benchmark of the best DES. And now we have the two-year uh, outcomes. So what are the novelties? Well, the, the novelties that we see at two years are actually uh, exactly what we were hoping for. Uh, as Antonio mentioned, you have a plateau, an increasing two to three year uh, uh, percentage of, of events every year. And so what we did see now in, in this uh, trial, that at two years, we actually remain on a plateau. So the event rate was 1.8 at one year, mm. TLF, and at two years, we have 1.9. Mm versus the uh, comparator increases, which leads to a 65% reduction in TLF rates in the overall population. So that's a significant drop reduction in TLF rates. Okay, so this is a more than encouraging because it shows that if the concept work, you expect this curve to become flat, which is something at two years we start to see. But now going into practice, because this is a stent, a bioadapter that we have already on our shelves in some centers. So I would like to ask Antonio Colombo to tell us who are the ideal candidates to start with and to, get, to gain some experience. But we, we in Humanitas have been conducting a prospective study for the past two years, uh, utilizing this device uh, in a complex lesion, the bioadapter in complex lesion. Complex lesion, I mean total occlusion, long LED lesion. And uh, we have uh, OCT as the baseline, and we will perform OCT as the follow-up. And I really believe uh, that the 
uh, quality of these devices are better expressed in long lesions mm -hmm. where a permanent caging may be a problem. In very short lesion, maybe a, a jump can, can be done, but in, short, in long lesion, a jump is more difficult for the blood uh, to maintain and the, all the characteristic uh, uh, of the vessel uh, elasticity. So I think uh, in long uh, complex uh, lesion, this device uh, is appropriate. As far as the implantation technique is exactly the same as a metal DS. Okay, so thank you for this advice. I don't know, Stefan, if you have uh, other candidates to be considered? Yeah, what I would like to add, especially based on what we've seen in the two-year data now here, is that the fact that in LED lesions, you have a 78% reduction in TLF, which is unseen and unheard of compared to the comparator, an almost 80% reduction in TLF. So that's, that's significant. And if you look at TVF, at target vessel failure, you also have a 65 or a 68% reduction compared to the comparator. So basically these, I would say LED lesions, long lesions, like Antonio said, Younger people, those are the ones uh, where you have this uh, possibility. And especially those vessels where you have most rotation, LED, RCA, those are prone to have more events. And I think that's a suitable platform for that. Okay, thank you for sharing with us uh, this information. I think it's a good teaser also to what next uh, for this uh, device because the Infinity's Wizard uh, trial will be presented soon uh, and this is a large scale study comparing in a proper manner with the uh, big numbers and of course more events uh, and to challenge this device versus the uh, uh, contemporary DS. So we look forward to have this data in order to know more, but we feel encouraged by this data because uh, they are going in the right direction. So thank you very much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and Thank you so much for uh, Thank attending. You. Thank you. It was Thank a pleasure. You.